Hey Geeks, Josh here, and today's video is a direct comparison between the Ryzen 9 3950X of last generation and the current generation Ryzen 9 5950X. I just upgraded the CPU in my computer to the 5950X from the 3950X, so I have a great apples to apples comparison. I have made sure that all the BIOS and driver settings were the same before and after, so really all I did is replace the processor in my computer, ran the benchmarks before, ran the benchmarks after. In my case, I've been trying to find a 5950X for a while, and I had one back ordered for a couple of months, finally came in. So my plan all along was to have the 5950X, and if I could have bought it when I wanted to build my computer, I would have. Now I'm just gonna resell the 3950. But what this is gonna help us look at is if you already have a 3950X in your system, do you need to upgrade to a 5950X? Is it worth it? Is it actually gonna give you extra performance? Uh, we'll look at some benchmarks for productivity, we'll look at some gaming benchmarks, and we'll look at uh, the performance per dollar when it comes to some productivity software like Cinebench. So again, I ran these benchmarks on my personal computer. Um, we're gonna go through the specs of that computer as well. And I'll say this before we get into the video. Personally, my opinion is if you already have a 3950X in your system, there's really no need to upgrade to a 5950X unless you just wanna spend the money or maybe your actual work is centered around the productivity that that processor can bring you and the time is simply worth more to you than the money because the 5950X, while it is faster than the 3950X, it's not necessarily faster you know, per dollar. The 5950X is more expensive and right now you can get the 3950X used for cheaper than retail and you're probably gonna end up spending right now as of you know the first of April more than retail on a 5950X if you can find one. So again, my opinion is if you already have a 3950X, don't worry about upgrading. If you're looking at building a new computer, you know, and you have the money, the 5950X is a fantastic processor, um, but it's really gonna come down to your situation and whether or not you wanna make the jump and spend the extra money. So let's jump into the comparison. Before we jump into the benchmark graphs, I do want to kind of show a side-by-side -side comparison of these two processors because, I mean, they're one generation apart, but they have a lot of the same specs. I mean, they have the same core count, very similar boost clocks, all of the L1, L2, L3 cache is the same. Uh, it's really pretty much a you know the same kind of processor, but it does have that Zen 3 upgrade on the manufacturing process. Everything is a little bit different. There is a lot of uh, you know per clock uh, performance increase. I think they uh, advertise 19% at some point in some tests. So there are some improvements with the architecture. But if you look at it side by side, 16 cores, 32 threads. On the 5950X, you've got a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz versus 3.5 of the 30. 5950. The boost clock on the 5950 is 4.9 and the boost clock on the 3950 is 4.7. Like I said, everything else is the same. The 7 nanometer process, uh, FinFET process, um, the same TDP of 105 watts, same max temps, everything else is the same. Now, I do want to point out that I, you know, there are some architecture differences and some of that has led to a little bit better cooling and a little bit better energy and a little bit better heat management, hence the higher boost clock that you can see in the 5000 series and I've noticed that myself as well. So let's jump into some slides and see what we've got going on with this comparison. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is my full system specs. So obviously I had the 3950X and I upgraded to the 5950X. Both of these processors are at stock settings. I didn't change anything in the motherboard BIOS. I just installed them, turned it on and ran it. All I did was set my uh, memory speed so that it was actually at the uh, XMP profile speed that it was rated for at the same 240 mil all-in-one uh, liquid cooler. I have the MSI NPG X570 Gaming Pro Carbon Wi-Fi, uh, a 6800 XT reference, uh, 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 RAM from G-Skill, a uh, couple of M.2 uh, hard drives in there, and I've got a 1200 watt 80 plus gold PSU to power it all, and uh, I'm under Windows 10 64-bit professional. So let's take a look. The first test that I ran was Cinebench 23, 
three. Um, and I want to point out that I have the single and the multi scores here. The 3950X is in the darker blue, uh, as it will be for all these slides, and the 5950X is in this greenish color here. Um, the single core scores, you know, there is some difference there. You can see 1323 versus 1641. Um, but, you know, Cinebench is about the multi-core workload. And if you look at those two comparisons there, you've got 23,145 versus 24,641. There is an improvement there. Now, note, I didn't do any overclocking for this. This is stock versus stock. So you can see the performance is noticeable, but it is not extreme. And as we'll kind of see going through some of these benchmarks, there are going be performance gains but they're not going to be incredibly huge they're they're really just going to show this generational advantage that the 5000 series has over the 3000 series and keep in mind that there is a price increase when you move from the 5000 series from the 3000 series especially when you consider that you could potentially get a 3000 series used pretty cheap right now all right pc mark 10 um the way the PC Mark 10 software works, the benchmark works, is you have an overall score and then it breaks it down into three categories, essentials, productivity, digital content creation. Essentials is opening up a program, daily, you know, just regular task management. Productivity uh, runs it through its own sort of Cinebench style um, productivity tasks. And then the digital content creation uh, actually runs through some video and image rendering and some of those sorts of things. So you can see here again, 3950X on top. Um, you know, the, the difference is it's, it's, it's basically the same graph. You just move it over a little bit, right? There's a little bit of improvement in every area. I do want to point out, though, that the digital content creation did actually um, have a, a higher spike um, than everything else, even though they're all higher for the 5950X, the digital content creation did jump up quite a bit. And one thing I will say is that personally, I make YouTube videos, I do care about this, um, about the rendering times uh, for 4K video and things like that. So this was a big selling point for me. But if you already have the 3950X, I mean, you're still gonna get great times uh, for a lot of this stuff. User benchmark is another sort of uh, all system wide benchmark, and it breaks it into three categories, your normal, heavy, and server um, simulated workloads. And this is basically one core, eight core, and 64 core simulated. So if you look here, you've got some differences. Oddly enough, the uh, single core differences are not huge, nor are the 64 core simulated uh, workloads. Uh, in fact, that's the, the smallest margin that we have here. The biggest difference you're going to see is this heavy or eight core workload, and that's showing the really the difference in uh, capability that these 5950X uh, processors have per core. Are you enjoying the video so far? Are you getting value from the benchmarks that I ran? If so, consider dropping a like on the video and let us know in the comments what you have going on in your situation. Are you looking to upgrade? Are you uh, building a new computer? Let us know. Moving into 3D Mark, we're starting to get into a little bit more of the gaming side. Um, I used the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark, and you can see here that 3950X versus the 5950X, there was an improvement, and you could say a pretty noticeable improvement between the two considering that it's just a generational difference but again it's about on par with how much extra money you're spending um, you know you're you, yeah you're getting some extra performance but you're paying a little bit extra for that performance as well in heaven 1080p extreme I did run the heaven benchmark at 1080 to try to bottleneck uh, the processor or to use the processor as a bottleneck as much as possible and take the GPU out of the equation and you can see uh, interestingly enough the average FPS was almost exactly the same but a couple of interesting notes the minimum FPS was higher on the 5950X and the highest maximum FPS was also higher on the 59, uh, 5950X by a, I would say a significant amount, um, especially when you consider the minimum. Um, that's a pretty big improvement. Obviously going from 378 to 405 FPS is not going to mean anything, but the average still ends up being pretty close to the same. And frankly, if you're spending money on a 5950X um, and you have a good graphics card, you're probably not gonna be gaming at 1080p anyway. 
All right, the Borderlands benchmark. I ran this as well. Um, I threw the graph together. I don't even know why I did because you can see the numbers are almost exactly the same. In this particular game, um, I don't know if it's incredibly optimized or incredibly unoptimized, but I had basically within a margin of error scores. And you'll see in the next game that I ran Gears Tactics, um, I didn't even make a graph because it was so close. You've got 65 FPS on the 3950X versus actually 64.4 on the 5950X. So even a little bit lower, I would still say that's within the margin of error. Uh, this particular benchmark actually is a little bit different every time it runs. So I would call this pretty much the same performance when it comes to these two games here. Now, obviously there are other games that are gonna, you know, that are gonna show a difference between the 5950X and the 3950X. Um, in general, what I've seen from other you know, performance benchmarks when it comes to gaming is that it really isn't gonna matter a whole lot at uh, the 4K uh, resolution mark. At 1440p, it will show up. You will see some differences and the, the 5950X will actually uh, you know, pull ahead just a little bit. And then at 1080p, when, it's, um, you know, when, uh, when the performance is shifted to the CPU, you're gonna see that gap widen up again. But again, most people at this price point for a processor are probably gonna be gaming at at least 1440p, if not a uh, 4K gaming. So I mentioned earlier about the performance per dollar. I do wanna point out if you're looking at something like Cinebench, if you're using this uh, processor for productivity related uh, software, you know, maybe you're doing Premiere, maybe you're doing uh, you know, image editing, renders, whatever you're doing, um, you know, what's the performance per dollar here? Does it actually make sense? I ran the numbers here and for the Cinebench 23 multi-core, that's what I use for this, um, you get on the 3950X actually 31.7 points per dollar spent, and this is retail prices. You're gonna end up spending more money on a 5950X than retail. And you can, like I said, you could, if you don't already have a 3950X installed, you can probably get one for cheaper um, because they're used at this point and people are upgrading. And then on the 5950X, you've got 30.8 points for uh, every um, dollar that you spend, again, at retail. So I would say the real world statistic here is gonna lean way uh, you know, in favor of the 3950X. And you know, at this point, is the 5950X worth it? I'll leave it up to you, but uh, if I already had a 3950X installed and the question was, do I wanna upgrade to a 5950X? I would honestly say the answer is no. Uh, you know, you have to keep in mind that this is the last processor on this socket for AMD. So if you upgrade into the 5950X uh, you're, and you plan to upgrade again in the future, you're going to have to replace your motherboard as well. Now, if you get this processor today, are you going to be able to use it for many years? Yeah, you can. But something to point out is that, again, if you already have the 3950X, there's really no reason to cap out of the 5950. If you're doing a new system build today and you have the extra money, sure, go ahead and do it. But if I had a 3950 and I wasn't you know, trying to get the 5950 forever, um, I would just sit tight and wait and see what happens on the next generation because you're going to move up to a new socket and you're going to get a new, another, uh, a new motherboard as well. So hopefully this helped you if you're on the fence about what you should do. If you already have a 3950X or maybe you're just weighing the two options and you want to upgrade and you can't get a 5950X and you want to see what the 3950X is about. I used the 3950X in my computer for uh, several months while I was waiting. Absolutely no issues, stable, everything worked great. Um, great performance, great speed, and honestly, it was in stock. I could pick it up right now. You can pick it up right now if you go online. Um, again, you can find them used so you can get even more bang for your buck. If you made it this far, please consider liking the video and even subscribing to the channel for more videos about uh, gaming hardware, computer hardware, PC builds, anything else that you might be interested in when it comes to PC gaming. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment on the video below, ask me a question, I'll respond to you personally, and maybe even making a video about your question at a later date. Thanks.